Uh, welcome, friends. My name is Artur Ceroński. And for some time I've been teaching on what God has showed me concerning the basics of Christian doctrine. The fifth part in this is this teaching on resurrection or being raised from the dead. We read about it in chapter 6, verse 2. The scripture says that we are actually talking here about rising from the dead. The word to rise um, in original Greek is anastasis, and it means lifting up, waking up from sleep. The original Greek word, he, word used here for the dead, on the other hand, is nekros, which means someone completely dead. So we can hear here that the issue of resurrection is not about some enigmatic phenomenon. This is a very real act of raising someone who really has died. I'm not talking now about raising someone from the dead that's happening nowadays so that people can live again here in the earthly body because this is something completely different. I'm talking about rising from the dead to a completely new life in a new body, in a new realm and so on. And as an introduction, I need to mention that this part of my teaching may be a little bit longer than the previous ones because I would like us to cover the topic exhaustively. This is very important to me that uh, we can have the right outlook on this issue. I don't want any misunderstanding or uncertainty to remain in our hearts regarding this subject. Let's start with 1 Corinthians. 15, verse 19. This verse says, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. So we can see here that Christianity is connected with a very strong drive or desire for the resurrection and for eternal life with God. You know, I preach a lot about achieving success with Christ here on this earth, but the real focus of Christianity is to understand the issue of the eternal life. The eternal life has already begun for us, but its culmination or climax will take place first after our resurrection. This is a subject we have to carefully study today. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9 we read these words If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So we can see that there are two elements in the center of Christianity. These are resurrection, my friends, and reigning. Our life is strictly connected with understanding of resurrection and reigning or ruling. Today, I'm not going to talk about reigning, I want to talk about resurrection. And I'd like to go straight to the three realms or levels of resurrection. We can distinguish three realms of resurrection. The first of them is the resurrection of Christ. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 2 to 9, we read, Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen, 
and they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? That's the tomb where Jesus was buried. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled, rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So the beginning of the topic of resurrection is the resurrection of Christ. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was the first to rise from the dead. The Word of God says in another place that He is like the first fruit, the foundation of rising from the dead. So if we are the people who believed, you remember what I previously told you, if in your heart you have faith that God raised Christ from the dead, then you will find salvation. The word used here for salvation is the Greek word sozo, which means completely saved, completely set free in every aspect, including death. So when we believe in Jesus Christ, and as the result we are born again, which means that our spirit rises to a new life, God starts to live in us. At that moment, we become unified with the resurrected Christ. In short, He is risen and we will rise from the dead too. Because we are in Him, right? That's the first realm. The first level is the resurrected Christ. Christ has risen. He has risen as the first one. Different people were risen from the dead by prayers of men of God, also in the time of the Old Covenant. Jesus raised people from the dead too, but the resurrection of the sort that Jesus experienced is something completely different, because Jesus appears here as completely new. He is theoretically like he was before, but in fact he is completely new. He has got a new body, he is all new. He has. I will talk about it a little bit more later, but this is this first uh, level, the resurrected Christ. There is now the second uh, realm. We read about it in the Gospel of John 6.40. Jesus says here this, For it is my Father's will that everyone who looks upon the Son and puts faith in Him shall possess eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day who looks upon the Son and puts his faith in him. So the one who has the revelation of Jesus as the Messiah, the one who receives him as the Lord and Savior, he will be risen from the dead on the last day. So that's the second level. There's the resurrection of people born of the Holy Spirit. This is quite an extensive subject. I will try to describe it as briefly as possible, but we have to look into the aspect of the resurrection of believers. Maybe I will start like this. The order of resurrection. This is important. The order in which believers are going to or are rising from the dead. The first very interesting thing is that he was uh, that was described in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 53. The word of God tells us here. Um, or maybe I will start to read a few verses ahead. So, Jesus dies on the cross. 
That's verse 15. And it is written here, Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. So he dies on the cross and here is written, at the bottom, the, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. There was an earthquake, the rock split. So we can see here a powerful phenomenon. The spiritual phenomenon caused a very strong phenomenon in the physical sphere. Verse 52 says, And graves opened, listen to this, dear friends, and many of God's people arose from sleep. And coming out of their graves, after his resurrection, they entered the holy city where many saw them. So we see here something that sometimes remains unnoticed. We see that the resurrection has already started. At the moment of Jesus Christ's death, some powerful changes started in the spiritual world. It actually happened to such a degree that the process of the destruction or the destruction of death started already right then. Death began to be destroyed. Now Jesus has risen after three days. This is one thing, but also other people who died who were risen were risen at this moment in different places. So we see that the first movement started. Those people who died in the time of Jesus and were buried before the time of Jesus or in his time, and they were buried in this area where, where Jesus died, they were resurrected. This was powerful. It was noticed. It could be observed. It turned out that former corpses started to walk on the streets. I need to make a digression right here uh, concerning the matter of dead people before the death and resurrection of Christ. I mean, what generally happened to them? You know, before Jesus died on the cross and rose up, their spiritual reality was arranged in a certain way. Today is different than at that time. The death and resurrection of Christ changed the spiritual reality connected with the place where the dead people stayed. Um, so before the death and resurrection of Christ, there was, my friends, a place called Sheol. That was the place where people who died before the death and resurrection of Christ stayed. They stayed in Sheol. Their spirits and their souls or psyches stayed there. Today I will not talk a lot about it because we have a lot of material to go through. When someone dies, his body dies. Uh, the psyche or soul and the spirit go either to heaven or to hell. At that time, however, it was a little bit different. People didn't go to heaven just like that. People died and their spirits and souls would go to a place called Sheol. And Sheol was a place divided in two separate parts. What is interesting, in the book of Amos 9, verse 2, it is written, I'm going to read this to you, though they dig down to the depths, Sheol, below, from there my hand will take them. So Sheol was a place where certain movements were possible. God could act somehow in Sheol. I will tell you soon what happened there later. So people were staying there. Sheol was divided into two parts. Where do we read about it? We can read about it in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 22 to 26. This is a parable about a rich man and Lazarus. We know that the rich man and Lazarus died. 
Both of them died. Lazarus was okay and the rich man was not okay. We read, One day the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried and in Hades, where he was in torment. He looked up and there, far away, was Abraham with Lazarus close beside him. Abraham, my father, he called out, take pity on me, send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham said, Remember, my child, that all the good things fell to you while you were alive, and all the bad to Lazarus. Now he has his consolation here, and it is you who are in agony. But this is not all. There is a great chasm fixed between us. No one from one side who wants to reach you can cross it, and none may pass from your side to us. So we see Sheol, and there are two parts in there. The first one is the land of the dead, and the second one is called in other places of the Bible, paradise. What is it? The land of the dead is a place where unrighteous people stayed after their death. People who did not seek God, who were not interested in the thing of God, or people who rebelled against God, even knowing that He exists. They didn't want to accept Him and His truth. Unrighteous people, as David says. On the other hand, in paradise, or with Abraham, were people who died before the coming of Jesus Christ, before His death and resurrection. They were righteous people, people seeking God. They walked with God, spent time with Him, they understood Him at some level, and surely their hearts were after Him. They were seeking God. So we can see that there was a chasm there, and it was impossible to reach over to the other side. Sheol was divided in two, the paradise and the land of the dead. In the land of the dead there were unrighteous people, in paradise there were righteous people. And they, all of them were waiting for Jesus Christ, right? They were waiting for him there. When Jesus died, this is interesting, he spent three days in the land of the dead. He reached everyone there with the gospel. How do I know it, my friends? I will tell you how I know it. I know it from the Bible, from 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 18 to 19. It says, For Christ also died for, for us sins once and for all. He, the just, suffered for the unjust to bring us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was brought to life, and in the spirit he went and made his proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. So we see here that after his death, Jesus was in Sheol for three days. And Jesus did many different things there. I will not describe them now in detail, but among others, he mortally wounded the devil there. That's why it is written that the beast has a deadly wound. It is written in the book of Revelation. So he made some kind of revolt over there. He also shared the gospel with the spirits that were staying there. He shared the gospel with the righteous and the unrighteous. One more time, I'd like to remind you what's written in the book of Amos, that it was possible for God to make some moves there. Now, Jesus, remember, Jesus is God. Look what happens. God incarnated, goes to Sheol and shares the gospel with the people there. Obviously, these people who stayed in the positive part, in paradise, they accepted the gospel immediately because they had been waiting for this all the time. They had previously had some sort of flashes of revelation. The unrighteous who stayed in the land of the dead had then yet the opportunity to receive the gospel, to make the decision. However, we don't know exactly what happened there, but we can see that something surely happened. So even the unrighteous who accepted the undeserved sacrifice of Jesus were moved from there. God's hand took them from there. They were moved from there. However, the entire construction of Sheol also changed at that time. 
that part where the righteous were staying had been staying and the right unrighteous who in Sheol accepted the words of Jesus as the truth, all the justified people were taken together with the paradise to heaven. The land of the dead wasn't divided anymore into the positive and negative part. Since that moment, it is only negative because the positive part was taken to heaven. I would like us to understand one important thing concerning this issue. As I said, the first part of the resurrection took place already. In Matthew 27, verse 53, we see that during the resurrection of Jesus, people start to leave their graves. This is the first movement. Then we see the second movement in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 16. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even, God, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So we see here resurrection. A resurrection of those who died in Christ. Those who died as born-again Christians will rise as first. The same letter, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17, tells us, Then we who are left alive shall join them, caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. We see here that immediately after the resurrection of people who died in Christ, a rapture of the church ta takes place. The church will be taken from the earth. Those who will be on the earth at that time, of course, I mean people born of the Holy Spirit, who will be raptured. Those who are already with God in heaven, but still don't have bodies, and those who are here on this earth and still have earthly bodies, will be raptured during the whole event of resurrection. Those who will be up there will be taken somehow to the earth space in the middle, and those who will be on the earth will be taken up to this airspace and we will start to enter the area of resurrection, the area of resurrection of believers. Now, my friends, what happens there? What happens later on the earth? I will only mention it today because in the next part I will talk about it more. On the earth, the great tribulation starts at this time. The Holy Spirit will be removed from this earth. Now, I want you to understand one important thing. If you are, I'm, I'm talking to you personally now, if you are a born-again Christian, you will not be on the earth during the time of the tribulation. When Jesus returns, and he can return even tomorrow, so if Jesus were to return tomorrow or in one week, and you would be alive on this earth, you would be raptured to heaven. Do you understand? There you will receive a new body. I will talk about it in a moment. And those who have died earlier, who already will have gone to be with the Lord, and their souls and spirits will already be in heaven, they will at this point be taken from there and will also receive new bodies. In other words, they'll be waiting in heaven, or are, I should actually say we'll be waiting with Christ in eternity until the great tribulation on the earth is over. So we will not be on the earth during the tribulation, friends, because we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We see here that people from the second and the third area will be gathered together by Jesus. Then the global resurrection will take place. And we will be waiting until the tribulation is over. 
Australia. We can also read about this in the book of Revelation, chapter 11. It is still not the end, because we have here four levels of the resurrection of believers. So far we already talked about three of them, but there is still the fourth one left, and it's a very interesting aspect. So Revelation chapter 11, Verse 9, this part of text of the text tells us about two witnesses, two men who will be who will be walking with God during the Great Tribulation and who will prophesy. You have to know that also during the Great Tribulation people will be converting to God and they will also be killed because of this. So we can see these two witnesses and their death is described here. They are killed and it's written that people from different towns and nations will be looking up at their corpses for three and a half days and they will refuse to bury them. Then verse 11 says, but at the end of the three days and a half, the breath of life from God came into them and they stood up on their feet to the terror of all who saw it. Now we can see that a kind of resurrection takes place there, right? Resurrection during the Great Tribulation. Resurrection of people who have died there. We also see, my friends, in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, Revelation of John, chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Or maybe we will first read verses 4 to 6. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. This is during the time of the Great Tribulation. Uh, they had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So this is the fourth aspect of resurrection, of those who died during the tribulation. I don't know if all people who give their life to Jesus during the time of the tribulation will die, but I have such an impression that it is possible. I think it is possible that all of them will die. However, it is also possible that not everyone will die and they will be taken from there. Anyway, we don't have to analyze this too carefully. We just have to know that this is the fourth level of the resurrection of believers. One more time. The first aspect of resurrection of believers is what happened already. People who rose during the resurrection of Christ, who had been buried close to Golgotha, they appeared in Jerusalem. Then we see Jesus call the spirits and souls that are already in heaven. At the same time, the rapture uh, of the church and the resurrection of believers takes place. Then the transformation of the bodies also takes place. And now we see the fourth aspect, and this is the resurrection of those who earlier died during the time of the Great Tribulation, or were taken by God at the final stage of the Tribulation. This is the resurrection of believers. So we see Jesus has risen as the first fruit. And secondly, there was the resurrection of believers. And then we have the third stage. The third stage is described in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 
till 15. That's the final judgment. Then I saw a great white throne and him who, who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. We see here the final third part of the resurrection, the resurrection of unbelievers. I will teach more about it in the last part of the elementary principle of Christ, because then I will talk about judgments in particular, uh, about judgments that have been planned by God. But those unbelievers will rise for the judgment. So the unbelievers raise a third after Jesus and the believers. Between the resurrection of believers and the resurrection of unbelievers, there will be the period of the millennial kingdom. Millennial kingdom. I will talk about this more in the next part also. After the time of the Great Tribulation, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Actually, the first thousand years after the tribulation will be a time when God will rule on the earth. Satan will be bound. All unbelievers will be dead and they will be waiting for the resurrection to be judged in their bodies. And here on the earth, Jesus and his church, the believers start to extend the millennial kingdom. So between the resurrection of believers and the resurrection of unbelievers is at least a thousand years of time space. Now I would like to say something about the quality or the specifics of the bodies we will have after our resurrection. I mean us believers. And what kind of bodies will the unbelievers have after their resurrection? So now, the specific quality of our new bodies, the glorified bodies. At present, our bodies are corruptible, they are destructible. They get destroyed by time, by sickness, by infirmities. Of course, we can use God's power, we receive healing, we receive deliverance. We can happily live on this earth even up to 120 years if we adhere to God's rules, but in the end we all die. I would say it like this. Personally, I intend to live 120 years in health, happiness and prosperity, practicing God's principles of faith and attracting the grace of God to myself, so I intend to have a good life and to spread God's kingdom all this time. But if Jesus does not return before the end of these 120 years of my lifetime, I will have to die. My body will die and my spirit and soul will go to heaven. I will be waiting for the resurrection there, but still without a body. Then later I will receive a body. Uh, so what will this body be like? I will receive an incorruptible body. Now our bodies are subject to destruction, but then we will get indestructible bodies. There will be no sickness, no infirmity, no aging, you understand? We will have eternal and indestructible bodies. Secondly, these bodies will be immortal. As I said, now our bodies are mortal, subject to death, but then we will receive immortal bodies that will never die. Thirdly, we will have bodies, now we have bodies which are humiliated, shameful in a sense, because our bodies are limited by time, space, matter, corruptible. Then we will receive different bodies. We will get glorified bodies. 
My friends, these bodies will not be subject to any limitation. Time, space or matter will not limit these bodies. In short, we will be able to immediately find ourselves in whatever place God sends us in His mind. We will be able to go through the walls and do things I cannot even imagine. But generally, our bodies will be completely different than our present bodies. They will look the same, more or less, but they, are, they will not be limited. And fourthly, now our body listens to our soul. Then our body will listen to our spirit. The point is that the human body listens to the psyche and in believers' lives, our psyche is always in process. Our bodies make mistakes because our souls make mistakes. But after the resurrection, we will get bodies which will be united with our spirits and not with our souls. Because our souls will be, so to speak, absorbed by our spirit. Let's say today we are able to make such a distinction, spirit, soul and body. But after our resurrection, it will be a uniform product. Our spirit will express itself directly through our body because our spirit and our body will become one. That's why it is written spiritual bodies. This is something our mind is not able to comprehend, or at least mine isn't. How is it that I now have such a body and then I will have a completely different body? I am only able to imagine it watching science fiction movies, going through the walls, doing God's will immediately without any resistance inside of me. So this is the specifics of our new bodies that we will receive. On the other hand, the unbelievers who will rise for the judgment after the time of the Millennial Kingdom, they will also get new bodies. These bodies will also be eternal. They will be indestructible and they will suffer eternally. There is an interesting description here. Many people don't agree with this. I don't have any other revelation as for today. I understand it simply as it's written in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. This is not humanitarian, but we must remember God is not a humanist. It is written that God is no respecter of persons. Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 45 to 46. It is written here that you can be thrown into hell where the devouring worm never dies and the fire is not quenched. So we see here a picture of constant suffering. Today, I understand it this way, that when the unbelievers rise for the judgment, they will receive indestructible bodies so they can suffer eternally. And the suffering there will be constant. I don't know what will happen later. I don't have a revelation concerning this issue. Today, I understand it as I have just told you, where the devouring worm never dies and the fire is not quenched. So their bodies will be suffering continuously. Uh, the devil and the demons will also be suffering there, while our bo bodies will be completely different. We will have glorified bodies. And afterwards, in these glorified bodies, because you know that there will be an afterwards, I will talk about in the next part, afterwards, it's after the judgment of unbelievers, after the millennial kingdom, when Satan is released from the prison, and after the final battle which takes place will take place, Satan will be finally judged and placed in Gehenna together with all his demons and with unbelievers entering the eternal suffering. The earth will be destroyed, there will, there will be a new earth, New Jerusalem, great city which will be the center of this new earth. We will live there in our new bodies. Dear friends, I believe I managed to share with you today the good news about our resurrection. I would like you to have no doubt regarding this issue that you will rise from the dead. You are born of the Holy Spirit, so you will surely rise from the dead. It doesn't matter if you are on the earth or already in heaven when Jesus returns. 
you will be resurrected and you will receive a new body. Then, as I said, you will live in this new body for eternity. You are called to eternal life. The underlying fact is that God is eternal. We will go beyond time, beyond space, and we will live eternally. The resurrection is for us to live eternally. I would like us to pray together now. Dear Father, I want to thank you for this message. Thank you that you in your wisdom revealed to me the way I should teach people about these things. Father, I pray for your revelations. I pray that this message will be clear and understandable for people who listen to this. I pray that the consciousness of the resurrection may penetrate them completely. Thank you, Father, for the resurrection, for the new glorified bodies. Thank you that we will not go through the great tribulation. I want to thank you for this. You are a great and powerful God. Father, we lay the teaching about resurrection as a foundation on the cornerstone, which is Christ. Amen.